Well, isn't this a turn up for the books? While the mainstream media terrifies us all with the deadly threat of Underwear Bomber 2, the so-called Al-Qaeda terrorist who turns out to be a CIA informant, the real Al-Qaeda, you know, those guys shipped into Syria by NATO, armed, trained, funded, transported, those same guys who Hillary Clinton says are on the same side as the United States, Oh yeah, those guys once again being busy today in Syria. State media has blamed terrorists for two bomb attacks which killed 40 people and wounded 170 in the capital, Damascus. And just as with the previous major bombings in Syria, the mainstream media, and in particular the London Guardian, has once again prostrated its entire news coverage over to anonymous Twitter users who claim to be Syrian activists. And they're of course saying that the whole bombing was staged by Assad's government itself. Now when we at InfoWars even suggest with hardcore evidence that the United States or Britain or any Western government could have been responsible for a false flag attack, um, with particular reference to the first underwear bomber incident, we're labelled completely crazy, it's a thought crime to even suggest it, how dare we? And yet the Guardian, every time there's an attack in Iran or Syria, completely prostrates itself, gives over 24-hour rolling mouthpiece propaganda platform news coverage to anonymous Twitter users who claim the following. Lena, and this is in The Guardian today, Lena, a spokeswoman for the Revolution Council of Damascus, speculated the government was to blame for today's attack. She claimed an eyewitness to the attack was shot by a government sniper. Speaking via Skype, she said, quote, Some people say the security forces were there in order to stage the whole operation and in order to stop people seeing it and recording whatever might happen. Lena conceded there was no evidence for government involvement in the attack, but insisted it was unlikely to be the result of a rebel attack. And if you go and look at the Guardian's live coverage of this Syrian bombing, again, as they do after every single incident like this, just basically handed over their entire news coverage to anonymous, dubious Twitter users who spout these wild conspiracy theories, as they, the mainstream media themselves characterises them, about governments being involved in false flag attacks. Of course, when we say it, it's, it's heresy, but if you say it about Syria, with no evidence whatsoever, then it's perfectly plausible. Why? Because they're trying to sell this NATO-led humanitarian military assault on Syria, and they do it after every single bombing. So, you know, those Al-Qaeda terrorists who were very useful in Libya in overthrowing Gaddafi, of course they're behind these bombings in Syria. They've been transported in by NATO, that's admitted on the record. And in fact, the group that's claimed responsibility for this is this so-called jihadi Al-Qaeda group. And, you know, as the Al-Qaeda flag uh, flies proudly high over courthouses in Libya, now it does the same in Syria. We've got the videos of them, you know, they, they have these huge meetings with the AK-47s and the, the massive black and white Al-Qaeda flag is draped in front of them. It's the same guys who uh, were gracious enough to help out NATO in Libya now doing the same in Syria. Of course, Syria is in a state of civil war. There's violence on both sides, but you'll never catch the mainstream media or the Guardian admitting to the fact that these glorious rebels who carry around rocket-propelled grenades are also responsible for violence. They just won't admit it, even though the independent, independent Arab League report said that they were engaging in violence. And of course they are. I mean, there's been what, half a dozen or more bombings um, in Syria over the past few months and they always lead back to these same NATO inspired groups. Of course the propaganda uh, to back that NATO humanitarian assault is quickly on the wane. We expose Syria Danny and him faking the idea that he was in a war zone and under attack. He then had to go on Anderson Cooper CNN and try to explain himself. It completely fell flat on its face and you haven't heard from Syria Danny, the British Foreign uh, Office propaganda agent since. So the whole raison d'etre for launching this humanitarian assault on Syria is quickly evaporating and that's why the mainstream media and in particular the Guardian is having to resort to uh, giving over their entire news coverage to these wild conspiracy theories which they admit have no evidence behind them that the government is attacking itself and staging all these bombings. Again, perfectly legitimate to say that when you're trying to sell a NATO war. If you say it about the US or Britain, 
it's sacrilege, it's a thought crime. Now I'll be hosting InfoWars Nightly News tonight where we're going to discuss this and other topics so be sure to tune in for that uh, and stay tuned also to the websites prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. I'm Paul Joseph Watson, I'll see you again soon.